Hello and welcome to the instructional videos for PractiCAD reports. Virtually everything in the PractiCAD program can be reported. And the following tutorials are going to show you how to design and create different types of reports and show you how to use them in different situations on your drawing. Now there are an enormous amount of options for this particular section so we're going to break it into different tutorials. Also, before you watch the section on reporting, you must have a good working knowledge on how to design catalog items of all types, fittings, architecturals, and other items, and you must have watched the entire video on how to create custom tags. All of the fields inside reports, the information that goes in those fields, work identical to those of custom tags, so you must watch those videos first. After you've completed the videos on designing catalog items, and how to create custom tags, you can come to the next tutorials to watch how to design reports inside PractiCAD. The first report we're going to build is going to be a purchased ordered round report. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to design a report that's going to report all the entities on our drawing that we need to order from another manufacturer. We're going to start simple with just conicals and then we'll start adding different entities to this report as tutorials continue. The first step to designing a report is always going to be to go into the library icon on your PractiCAD ribbon. On the left hand side we're going to want to open up documentation, we're going to open up reports, and here you can see the list of all the reports you have in your software. You can also see the entire list by clicking on the word report, and when you click on the word report you'll notice that the list of all the reports and their icons is here. You'll also know a couple different options up top. Now these options here are for cataloging your reports later and there will be separate tutorials on those. Currently what we're going to do is we're going to go over to report, we're going to highlight it, and then we're going to click on the create a new item check. And when we click on that, PractiCAD is going to open up a window and it's going to ask us to pick a custom icon. We can either pick one from our graphics that PractiCAD provides or a custom one we've built or we can hit cancel and cancel in this particular case is going to give us the default icon for report. We're now going to name the report and we're going to name it conical report to start and we're going to hit enter. It's always good to hit enter therefore PractiCAD will verify that it's accepted the name you've given it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our window and we're going to take a look at the three tabs we have in reports. The selection tab, the sketch tab, and the page setup. Now during the tutorials we're going to have to go back and forth between these three tabs but we will try to break them down into section. We're going to start off with the selection tab and the parameters we offer here. The first tab you're going to see in reports is the selection tab. The selection tab allows us to make sure that PractiCAD only grabs a hold of those entities that we'd like to report. For example, if we pull down our menu, you can see here that we've got multiple reducers on our drawing. And currently, we would just like to report the reducers that we're actually going to order. In other words, if we exit out and we look at the properties of each of these reducers, you'll notice one big difference. The three reducers on the top, if we click on their properties, their fabrication level is cut and labeled. This means that these are going to be sent down to the plasma cutter and we don't want to incorporate them in our report. You'll notice that they were taken from the original PractiCAD template fitting finish length round reducer. The other nine conicals on the drawing or reducers were basically coming from the conical catalog. The conical catalog was the custom catalog we built from the fitting reducer. These actually are going to be set to order. You will notice in the property box that their fabrication level is set to order. In this particular report, we would only like PractiCAD, even if we highlight all of them, to report just the fittings that we called conicals that are going to be purchased from another vendor. So what we do is we must use the options under the selection tab. So we're going to go back into the library icon. And as always, PractiCAD remembers the last place in the library we were. So the selection tab is already checked and we're back inside reports. What we're going to do is we're going to maximize our screen with our maximize button. And we're now going to click on the close browser button so that we can just focus on what is available inside the reports. Now currently you'll notice that the selection set is blank and so are all of the fields we have here. 
You will also notice that if we go to sketch, which is where we design the bulk of our report, all of the data, if we open up all of these fields, you'll notice that we currently are only offering the four fields, page header, document header, document footer, and page footer. And when we get into the sketch, we're going to go over all of the different choices here. But whatever we do pick in selection tab, is going to have an effect on what we see in the sketch tab. So I wanted to point out, currently as a default, each blank report will only start with these four rows. Now what we're going to do is go into the selection tab. And right here you can see that we have a checkbox for create. It's always the same symbol to create everywhere in the software. And we're going to say we want to add a selection set. When we do this, Practicad is going to ask us to name whatever we want to call this selection set. And for this tutorial, we're going to call it Conicals. Now, the name here does not make a difference because it is not something that shows on your report. However, naming it will make it a lot easier to sort through later. So we're going to name it Conicals. Once we choose our selection set Conicals and have added it to this field, you'll notice under the sketch that if we click once, you can see that PractiCAD has added the Conical header and the conical footer and a row called detail. Once again, we're going to go over all of these different rows and all the different fields when we come into the sketch tab tutorials. So going back into the selection tab, now we need to choose what we want, what entities we want PractiCAD to utilize underneath the conical selection set. And in this particular exercise, we're going to report fittings. So we're going to check fittings. Notice here under types we have a list of every entity in the software. Everything from fittings to walls, hangers, steel, custom items, everything happens to be listed here. Once we check a specific selection set, PractiCAD is going to list those entities under the Entities field. Notice here we have a list of all of the catalogs in the software. And now they are all unchecked. What we can do is simply check what fittings we would like PractiCAD to report under the selection set conicals. If a fitting is not checked, even if you highlight it on the drawing, PractiCAD is not going to report it. It only reports what's checked. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the PractiCAM single wall. We're going to go into the round and we're going to go into the transitions. And we're going to specify that we only want to check the fittings that we created our catalogs out of. And in this particular case, the conicals on the drawing were created from the fitting round reducer. Always make sure that you check the proper fitting here to match your catalog entities or the report will not report what you're looking for. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check round reducer. Now, what we're going to do next is decide, do we want all round reducers on the software to be reported? Or do we want just the round reducers that happen to be from the Conicals catalog reported? So if we only want round reducers from the Conical catalog reported, we must create a new condition set. And these condition sets are identical to the PractiCAD layer mechanism, automatics, virtually all the condition sets in the software are the same. Right here we get a field for building conditions. And the condition we're going to want to use here is we only want PractiCAD to report the reducers on the drawing that came from the catalog name conicals. And for this reason it's important that you've watched all the videos on how to design custom catalog items. The first step of every report is to create what you'd like to report and then report it by the name. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say to only include in this selection set conicals those reducers where the catalog name equals and we're going to type in conicals. Remember, like all sections in the software, this field is case sensitive. It is for this reason in the tutorials, 
with designing catalogs, I always recommended calling the catalog names with full capital letters. This way we don't have to go back. For example, we're going to go over to the ductwork libraries. We're going to open up Practicam single wall round. We're going to go to the transition round reducer. We're going to specify to save our changes so we don't lose what we've created. And in here you can see that the name of the catalog is conicals in capital letters. So that is the property catalog. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the backward tab to just go back to where we were in our conical report. And now what we've got here is the conical selection set again. So what we're going to do is close our browser. So we've got to click on fitting. Notice that when you click on the word fitting, up until that point, you don't see the selection set. See, if we click on wall and highlight it, there's nothing in the condition field. But when you click on the type or the entity fitting, you'll notice that right here, it opens up the selection set. And here we're going to say the catalog must equal conicals. That means that when we highlight all the duct on the drawing, the only thing that's going to be reported thus far in this selection set will be reducers, which come from the entities over here on the right, with the catalog name equaling conicals. Once we have chosen the proper selection set parameters and created all the selection sets we need, we now know exactly what entities should be included on this report. Now what we need to do is choose what properties of those entities we would like to have included in this particular report. So what we're going to do is go into the sketch tab. The sketch tab is where we lay out the entire report. Now before you come into the sketch tab, it is highly recommended to have laid out on paper or Excel someplace exactly what you'd like this report to look like, how you would like items grouped, and we're going to go over the technique of grouping, and how many rows and columns we need to meet all of the parameters we'd like to show in the report. For example, what we've done here is we've got a snapshot of what we'd like this report to look like. I always recommend designing this on paper or on your computer or somewhere so you know exactly how many headers you need and how many rows and columns. Here you can see we're going to design a report to have a document header called MetaLab Purchased Round. And then we're going to have a selection set header called conicals. And then we're going to need at least two columns. One column for the diameter header and another column for the quantity header. And you can see here that we're going to group our entities by diameter and then report the sum quantities of those groups. And we're going to get into details on grouping later in the tutorial. Right now what we need to do is make sure that we open up our sketch so that we've got the proper number of rows or columns in order to create this report. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to see that we need two columns. So we're going to open up to A and B. And if you've watched all the instructional videos on how to create custom tags, the reporting feature is identical. We're now going to take the column A and we're going to stretch it by grabbing on that little dotted yellow line and we're going to stretch it all the way out here. Now we can't stretch out B until we open up C first. In other words, if we try to stretch out B and pull it out, Practicad is going to open up another column. So we always have to have one more column open than we need before we can resize the column B to what we want. So we're now going to resize column B and then what we can do is we can come back and we can always close column C. Keep note that you will never be able to close a row or column if there's any information in one of those fields. Currently, all the fields are blank, so we can do this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to lay out the report under the sketch. We've got the page header and footer. Generally, what we use those for is for if we're going to print out this report on paper, we can have a page count and page number. We're going to go over that. We have a document header and footer. In this particular tutorial, we're going to call the document header the MetaLab Purchased Round Report. We then have a selection header and a selection footer. Here we're going to use the selection header 
to say conicals, as you can see here on our sample. And then we're going to have the details. And dependent on the grouping will depend upon whether or not we're putting the properties we want reported under details or in some other row. We're going to go through all different exercises to explain that. But what we've got here is the layout of this report thus far to match. One thing we're going to do is we're also going to make sure that the size of our fields is going to match. Notice currently that for the document header, we've chosen to make these particular fields twice as big as all the others. And we did that because we're going to come into document. We're going to stretch down just a little bit. We just pull on the gray just a little bit. And now what we've got is we've got fields 1AB and 2AB open for document. And we can combine these fields by simply, just like we do with custom tags, stretching these fields open. And then we can also pull them down here. So in other words, what we're about to do for the document header is we're going to combine all of the fields to one large field. Now we're ready to fill in the data for the report. Practicat offers the page header and page footer for each report you build. The page header and page footer you will only see if you actually print this report out. If you would like to have a page header, for example, let's say we have a 10 page report and at the top of that report you'd like it to say page 1 of 10 and then page 2 of 10, page 3 of 10. We can create this page number and page count so that you see it on your actual printed reports as a page header. We can also do that and put it at the bottom of page footer. Virtually at the head of every page or the foot of every page, we can type in or create any parameters we'd like. So what we're going to do is pretend that we are going to print this report out and we're going to click on field 1A. And here we're going to open up the field box and you're going to see that all of the options are identical to the custom tag section in Practicad. So it's very important to watch those videos. Over here we're going to go into property. Now most of these properties are going to be for Practicad entities. However, there are a lot of properties that have been added specifically for reports. And one of those type of properties happens to be the page number and page count. Page count would be, if you have a 10 page report, the page count is 10. Page number would happen to be, if this is the second page of 10, page number is 2. So it might be often you'd like to see page 1 of 10, page 2 of 10. So what we can do is we can build an expression that will show that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's see first page number. And we choose the property page number, and we're going to hit ampersand to put it into our expression. Then we're going to hit the little plus key, because we would like to see the text of. Just like custom tags, it is essential that anytime you combine a property field with a text field, you put in a little plus key. So we're going to say plus, and then we're going to go text, and we're going to say we'd like to see the word of. So whatever the page number is, whatever that numerical value is, we're going to see that. Then we're going to see of, and then we can see the next thing, which would be page count. And here we're going to say we'd like to see page count. Now once again, before we combine the text with property, we're going to hit the little plus key. So we've got a plus key here, and we're going to see page count. Now keep in mind, we didn't put any spacing here, but if you would like to see one space of space 10, you might want to use spaces inside your text field. But right here, if we do print out a report utilizing these parameters, it's going to say page 1 of 10. And what we're going to do here is we're going to align it on the left of that particular field, and then we're going to move on to the document header. The document header and the document footer are usually used to first name the document, the name of the document with the document header, and then second, we usually use the document footer for a summary of the items on the drawing, maybe a total quantity. There's a variety of different options here, and dependent upon the report you're making, we'll change what kind of options or what we use this for. You can utilize them in a lot of different ways, but generally, the document header is always the name of the report, and the footer would be where we put some conclusions. And we'll get to that in later exercises. But right now, we know that in our layout, we know we want to name the document MetaLab Purchased Round. So all we're going to do is double-click 
on the document header. We've already opened up that field, so it's one large field comprised of four smaller ones. And what we're going to do is we're just going to come over to text inside our field box, and we're going to type out Metal Lab Purchased Round, the name that we want to appear as text on this report. And then we're going to simply place it in the header, and we're going to make sure that it's aligned in the center. We can always align it in the left, right. We're going to keep the document header aligned in the center. Now what we're going to do is we're going to border it. We're going to highlight all four borders, the left, right, top, and bottom. This way the Metal Lab purchased round is completely surrounded, and it's going to look exactly as we have here with a border around it. And now we can move on to our selection set. Next we're going to create all the headers for our selection set. Here you can see we're going to have a header that just says the word conicals to introduce our selection set. Then we're going to have two other headers, one column with diameter and one column with quantity. And these should always be on the drawing or the report as text. So notice the conicals is going to be a combination of both. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the conicals header here. We're going to open up by grabbing our mouse and pulling down on the gray bar just a little bit so that we've now got two rows. And the first row we're going to combine. We're going to combine field 1A and 1B. We're going to click on 1A. We're going to hold our mouse till we see the double headed arrow. And we're just going to pull to the end. Let go. Now we're just going to double click on there. And we're going to type in the header we want. And that's going to be conicals. So we type it in under the text field. We're going to hit the ampersand. We're going to say let's put borders on all four sides. Left, right, top, and bottom and align it in the center. Then we're going to come into this field where we want the column header diameter and we're going to type in in text diameter and then we're going to enter that into the field and once again we're going to center it border all four sides and last but not least we're going to say let's do the same for this field we want to see the header quantity and we're going to center it and put borders on all four sides. So currently all we've done is created a report that should always show the header, metal air purchased round, conicals, and then have the two rows or the two columns for diameter and quantity. So what we're going to do is we're going to save and then we're going to open up our browser and we're just going to drag this report into our bin and we can exit out and run this report real quick. What we're going to do is highlight these entities. We're going to highlight all of them and we're just going to run the report. And you can see thus far this report contains nothing but the headers we've created. So now it's going to be time to fill in the details of the properties of all the entities we're highlighting. To explain how the detail tab works, we are back under the sketch tab inside of our report. The detail field is one of the places where we would usually build the properties that we want Practicad to report. In this particular case, as you can see as we've laid out here, we would like to see in this particular column the property of diameter out. We're actually reporting the diameter out of the conicals, followed by a little inches symbol and the diameter symbol. Over here, we'd like to see the quantity of fittings per each diameter. And this is going to bring up the topic of grouping, and we're going to focus on that topic quite a bit after this particular tutorial. Here, what we're going to do is focus on just utilizing the proper quantity. So we're going to put in the properties for diameter and quantity, and we're going to make it work so that we see it represented as it's here. So the first we're going to do is click on the field here under detail under the diameter header, and we're going to say that the property, we're going to choose D for diameter, and then we're going to pick diameter out. Whenever you're utilizing properties, pay attention to make sure you are grabbing the proper one. The property diameter out looks very similar to the property damper out. And it's very easy to make a mistake if you're moving quickly. So always move slow and double check to make sure you are choosing the proper property. So what we're going to do is we want to say we want to see property damper out. We're going to hit the ampersand. And then what we're going to do is we're going to combine it with the inches key and the little symbol for diameter. So we're going to combine it with text. So we're going to hit the plus key. And then we're going to come into text and we're going to type in the inches symbol. And we're going to copy the diameter symbol out of the character map. And we already went over tutorials on that. There's a quick tip underneath the custom tag videos. Hopefully you've watched how to use the character map. Currently we've got the character map on our desktop. 
we've got the diameter symbol highlighted. We're just going to copy it, and then we're going to paste it right here under text. We're going to enter it into our expression, and now we can see that the first field is going to produce the diameter out plus the inches and the diameter symbol. So we're going to border it, then we're going to center it, and now we need to pick a format and precision. We're going to say decimal zero for this particular field. Now we're going to move over to the quantity field. To go over quantity, most of the time, whenever we're talking about quantity, we're actually talking about what we call sum quantity. We have nine items on the drawing that we want to report. Three conicals that are eight inches, three conicals that are 10 inches, and three conicals that are 12 inches. And we want the report, as you can see here, to show what we call the sum quantity of all of the fittings that have the same diameter out or that are grouped by diameter out. In this particular tutorial to start off, we have nine items in pairs of three and each of those that are, have the same diameter out are identical. Every single property is identical. That makes the report a lot easier. But sometimes you're sorting and you're only grouping by one or two parameters. And we're going to get into that in later tutorials. So currently what we're going to do is show you how to utilize the sum function. If you double click on the field, you can see here in reports that ab above the if then else expression, we added the sum function. And what we're going to do is we're going to say function sum. We're going to hit the ampersand and that's going to put it into the expression. And then we're going to put inside those parentheses the property quantity. And this property exists only inside reports currently. We're going to hit the ampersand. And now we're going to say border it on all four sides, center it. And we're going to choose the format decimal precision zero. Some quantities, we just want to see numerical value like one, two, three. When you use some quantity, it's going to total up the quantity of items that you've specified are grouped together. And there's two ways to group, and we're going to go over that. One way is to go into the selection tab and utilize this feature. It says use one record for identical items. This is a great way of grouping if in fact your report is going to have items that are always identical, all the properties. However, most of the time we're grouping stuff by one or two parameters. In that particular case, we have to go over the group by section, which is coming up shortly. First, let's uncheck use one record for identical items. Let's save this, and then let's use this report on our drawing. We're going to highlight all the items on the drawing, and then we're going to utilize this report, and we're going to put it there. And what we're going to do is take a look at the number of rows, the number of line items. Currently, if we count, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The reason it's reporting nine line items is because we have nine items that meet our selection set. The first three items here do not have the catalog name conicals, so Practicat didn't report them. That's correct. So for the rest of this tutorial, we're going to delete these. We're just going to focus on these nine items. We don't want our report to have a separate line item for each entity. So what we can do is we can use the function, use one record for identical items, and get a sum quantity of the ones that are identical. So to do that, we're just going to delete this report. We're going to go back into the library icon. We're going to go back into our selection tab, and we're just going to check use one record for identical items. And what that means is we're going to now get a sum quantity of all the items that are identical. And whenever we use the word identical, we mean that every single parameter in the property box is identical from one fitting to the next. Every parameter must be identical. We're going to hit save. We're going to exit out. We're going to run this report one more time. We highlight these entities. We run our report. We click. We put it on the drawing. Now you can see that the report 
has been designed the way we want. It's now giving us a sum quantity of the identical items, 8 inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch. So here we've done it correctly. Now we're going to go over the concept of grouping. There's a feature underneath the selection tab called group by. Out of all of the features inside the reporting mechanism, this is the most important one to master and understand. Grouping allows us to design virtually any report we need, and you have to understand when to use it and how to use it. In the earlier tutorial, we were building conicals as a selection set, and we were getting some quantity from that conical report. But the sum quantity was adding up the quantities of identical items. Whenever we've got items that are truly identical, and a truly identical item means all of the parameters match, and we're going to go over exactly what that means, we can use the Use One Record for Identical Items feature. However, if we're trying to report items and group them by one parameter, but the other parameters happen to be different, we cannot use this feature. For example, we're basically going to exit out and we're going to look at our drawing. What we've put on the drawing are nine pieces of spiral pipe. You can see here that we've got three pieces of 12 inch spiral pipe with different lengths. We're going to right click and go to the property box and we're going to focus on the property length. Notice that it says varies. When Practicad goes to define whether items are identical, it searches through all of the properties in the AutoCAD property box. And if any of these properties has the word varies, these items are not identical. The only exception to that rule would be history and elevation parameters. The elevations can be different and things can be created or stripped off at different times. So you're going to see the word varies. However, if an identification, technology, geometry, tap parameter, or any other kind you see the word varies, they are not identical. So what we have here is we want to design a spiral length report. We're going to combine it with the conical report. And that spiral length report should group all the spiral on the drawing by the parameter or property diameter and then add up all the lengths of those spiral pipes. So here you can see we have a 30 inch piece, a 70 inch piece, and a 140 inch piece. If we add that up, it should be 240 inches or 20 foot. So the way we'd like to see this report is we'd like to see 12 inch diameter, some length, 20 foot. 16 inch diameter, some length, 20 foot. And 20 inch diameter, some length, 20 foot. To do this, we must use the grouping feature. So we're gonna go back into the library icon and here we're going to maximize our space, close our browser, and we're going to go over how to utilize the group by feature. The first thing we're going to do is create a second selection set. We're going to go up to the selection set, we're going to click on the add button, and then we're going to type in the spiral selection set. We're going to name it spiral. Once we do that, notice that in the sketch, Practicad's going to add, if we just click once, it's going to add the header, and footer for the spiral selection set. All we need to do is simply click on the drawing once and Practicad will open it and add it. Now what we're going to do is going to go back to selection. For the spiral selection set, we'd like to choose fitting and we're going to choose the type fitting and then we're going to say that the only fitting we'd like to report in this particular selection set will be the spiral pipe. For this part of the tutorial, we're not going to choose a condition. We're just going to say report all spiral pipe. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the sketch. And we're going to set up the header of spiral similar to what we did with conicals. I'm actually going to close the conical footer. If we don't need it, we can always close it to save space and also make things less confusing. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the spiral header, like we did with conicals, to two rows. We're going to take the first row, open it up, double click, and we're going to name it spiral. And all we're going to do once again is put borders and alignment. 
Then we're going to go to this field here. We're going to give it the header diameter. We're going to enter that into the field. We're going to border it, center it. And last, we're going to do sum length. And that's going to be what we use here. Instead of sum quantity, we're going to do sum length. And we're just going to center and border. So now we have all of our headers correct. Now before we go any further, and this is the reason why it's so important to lay out your entire report first, we have to decide if the detail field is the right place to put our properties. What we're going to do here is we would like to report the sum length of all spiral pipes on the drawing that have the same diameter in property or that are grouped by the same diameter in. What that means is if I got 30 pieces of spiral in a drawing that are all 8 inches in diameter but all of the other properties are different from length to liner everything else we still want to get a sum length of every piece of spiral that has the property diameter in equaling one another. So if one spiral equals 8 inch, the other one's 8 inch, regardless of the length or any other property, we want to get the sum length of those pieces together. So what we need to do is we need to go into the selection tab and we need to group by the property we'd like to use. So we're going to go over here and we're going to hit create a new parameter. And when we do that, we're going to get the drop down menu of all the properties that the spiral duct has. And we're going to hit D to go to the D properties. And we're going to find a property diameter in. Once again, whenever you're choosing properties, make sure to choose the proper one. Many properties look alike. So we're going to say diameter in, group by diameter in. Now we're going to be asked whether we want to sort. This is a sorting feature, up or down. If we say sort down, the report's going to say, 14 inch, 12 inch, 10 inch, 8 inch. It's going to sort the report by diameter in down. If we say sort up, it's going to say 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch. It's going to sort the report up. So we can also use this feature not only to group, but also to sort. Once we've added a section for grouping, and keep in mind, you can create multiple groups. You could say group first by diameter and then second by piece number. And therefore, you can continue to order your report. You don't need to use just one group. But here we're using one just to start. Once you add a group, when you go back into your sketch, you're going to notice that PractiCAD, if you click on the drawing again, has added a group header for diameter in based on property and a group footer. Now what we're about to show right here is the most important thing to understand. So I recommend watching the video more than once. If in fact you want to get a sum of any property in the software and you want to add the sum together for properties that are similar based on the field or property you grouped by, in this particular case the property diameter in, you do not put the parameter data in the detail field. You put it in the field that you wanted to group everything by. So what we're going to do here is we are not going to use the detail field. We're actually going to put the diameter properties here in this field. And we're going to do the sum length properties in this field. Very important. The difference between putting it here or in the detail field, one report's going to be completely wrong. The other one will be exactly the way they want. So what we're going to do real quick here, just to save some time as a quick tip, we're just going to double click on this field with diameter out. And I'm going to use the copy button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this field right here. And then we're going to come over and we're going to hit paste. Now I understand that we really want to use the property diameter in, but I think it's quicker to simply modify it using copy paste than to go back into the character map again and find the symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete one section of this expression and I'm going to find the property for a diameter in 
and we're going to place it there, and we're going to keep the rest. So diameter in, and we're going to place it there. Now we just need to border and align. And we're going to choose the format decimal and the precision zero. Now this field's ready to go, and it's in the proper place. We're going to go over here to sum length, and we're going to say we don't want the sum of the property quantity. What we want is the sum, and we're going to click on function, sum. We hit the ampersand to put it in here. And now we're going to find a property length. And what it's going to do, because of the grouping feature, is it's going to group and add all the lengths together of any spiral pipe that has matching diameters. And that is the purpose of the grouping feature. So what we're going to do here is we're going to center and we're going to border. And we're going to say format will be architectural and we'll do precision a half inch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to save this report and we're going to exit out and run it. Here we have our spiral pipe on the drawing. And we're going to highlight just spiral pipe. We also have the conicals from the earlier tutorial here. But we're not going to highlight them at this moment. What we're going to do is we're just going to run that report and we're going to place it on the drawing. And you can see that first everything is correct exactly as we wanted. Practicat has grouped all the spiral by diameter and then it's added the sum lengths up for like diameters. So that's the first thing to take notice. This report was designed correctly. The second thing to take notice is that there are no headers for the conicals. What happens is if in fact you fill a selection set header with data, but you highlight the drawing and there are no entities that meet that selection set, Practicad doesn't put that on the report. So that's another thing to take note of. So just to demonstrate what would have happened had we built this report incorrectly, we're going to take a snapshot of a report that has instead of the diameter in parameters filled in, the detail parameters filled in. Here you can see the exact same report, but we removed all the data from the group by field, the diameter in, into the detail field. And if we were to save this report and run it currently, this is what the report would look like. You can see here that we have a new line item for each size or each different item because they're not grouped by diameter. So it is grouping in terms of the sort, but it's not combining the sum length of all the like diameter types. So it's very important to make sure that you put the proper parameters in the proper fields. This concept is the most important in reporting, so please make sure to watch this video again if it was hard to understand the first time. The last section of your reporting mechanism is the Page Setup tab. After you've already designed your selection and sketch parameters and your whole report is built, now you need to choose how you would like to utilize the report. There are three ways, Create Entity, Print, and Export to Excel. The first way, create entity, is the easiest one and is also the one that we've been utilizing the entire time during the tutorials. Basically, create entity means, when checked, this report should create an entity on the drawing. And the only parameter you need to fill in here is the width of the report you would like. For example, here if we type in 500, we hit save, we exit out, and now we run our spiral report, we're actually going to get it as an entity on the drawing. And if we click on it, you can see here by double clicking and looking at the properties, you're going to see here that the page which happens to be 500. And this is also adjustable. You can change it after you've put it on the drawing so that you'd like the page width to be smaller. But all you need to do is pick a page width and check create entity and then you can put any report as a schedule on your drawing. The second option in the page setup tab is to print your report. If print is checked, the second you go to run your report, it will print. Here you'll notice that you have the options to print out a first page header or a first page footer. In this particular case, we'll say let's print out the first page header. You're then going to choose the printer you'd like to use. In this tutorial, we're going to say let's print to an Adobe PDF. You're going to choose the paper type based on any paper type you're using. 
You have the portrait and landscape orientation as you do for standard printers. You can choose the number of copies. And of course, here you're going to have your margins for your paper setup. Once you choose all of the proper parameters, all we're going to do now is run the report. And this time, Practicad's going to print it. Here we're going to highlight the conicals and the spiral. We go to print the report. And instead of putting it on the drawing or creating entity, what we're going to have here is a printed report, which now all we need to do is press OK, and we'll go down to our printer. The third option we have under the Page Setup tab is the ability to export to Excel. Instead of creating an entity on the drawing or printing the report, we can also send it to an Excel spreadsheet. If you'd like to use that option, simply check it here. To demonstrate what this would look like, we're going to exit out of My Library, we're going to highlight the entities of duct we have on the drawing, and we're going to run a report with that option checked. Here we're going to run the training report, and the training report has the Excel option checked. To demonstrate to you what this looks like, we're going to open up the spreadsheet, and here you can see our Excel workbook, and here we have the Metal Lab Purchased Round Report. After this, of course, you can modify, print, or do anything you would normally be able to do inside Excel. One thing to mention is that this program currently only works with the full version of Excel. It does not work with Excel Starter. So if you would like to use this option, currently you must have the full working version of Excel. The first option we have under the Excel section is the option to choose the width of the fields in the Excel spreadsheet. Currently you can see we have it set on 800. And if we come down to our Excel report, you can see the size of 800. And just to show you the difference in numbers, what we're going to do here is going to go back into Practicad. We're going to take the width and we're going to just change it to 1200. And then we're going to save by hitting the save key on the left. And then we're going to exit out of library and run this report again. So going to highlight our entities, we're going to select our report. And once this report is generated and we look at the fields, you can see here that the fields are already much larger because we've set it to 1200. So we can always control the size of the width of our fields in the Excel workbook. The next option we have to cover are our folder options. Here under our folder options, we can choose where we'd like this Excel report to be saved. Now we cover all of these options in a tutorial titled how to use auto takeoff takeoff tab full there we cover exactly what the absolute current and default options are we cover how to design and use subfolders name delimiter and number of digits in this tutorial we're only going to go over these briefly the three current options we have for folder are absolute current and default if you choose absolute Practicad is simply going to ask you to pick what folder you want the report to go. In this particular case, it would go to the PCAD training video folder, subfolder, PCAD export folder. So it would go inside the last folder here, PCAD export folder. If we choose current, it saves it to the Practicad default folder. There's a default folder that is created when you install Practicad. The file path is actually listed right here. It's C drive, users folder, then the name of the users folder, app data, local, and temp folders. And under here in this temp folder, which is automatically generated by the software, if you'd like to use that as a destination path, you can choose current. 99% of the time, users will always choose absolute or default. Default is a very good option to use. Essentially what default means is instead of picking an individual folder for individual reports, you just take all the reports and you say that you want them to go to the default folder. Therefore, if we change the default folder once, it will change the folder paths for all of the reports that have this checked. To show you where you choose the default folder, we're going to come over to the left and we're going to open up our browser. Currently, we are under training report. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll up and here underneath documentation, you can see we have report. And if we click on the word report, we'll save our changes. Once we do that, Practicad opens up a window. It is identical to the window in the how to use auto takeoff, where we demonstrate how to build subfolders. And this window basically allows you to choose the default folder for your reports. But not one report. All the reports that you see in your software can be pointed directly to the default folder and then by just simply changing the absolute folder here 
it will update the file path for all of the reports that have the default option checked. So here you can see that the default folder for all of our reports currently is under the PCAD training video folder and there's a subfolder called PCAD Excel reports. We'd also be able to create an additional subfolder and here we're just going to choose one based on job name for the demonstration and now what we're going to do is we're going to run an Excel report and it's going to go to the default location. So once again, the default location is PCAD training video folder, PCAD Excel reports. And you can see here we've got another subfolder which is based on the job name and the job name currently happens to be PCAD training videos. So if we come down here to the report we're about to run and click on training report and we look underneath the page setup, you can see here that we've chosen the default option. So since the default option is chosen here, it is simply going to take this report, it's going to look at the default report folder, which is listed here, and it's going to save it. So we're going to exit out of library, we're going to highlight all of the entities on the drawing, and we're just simply going to run this report. When we click, that report should automatically be saved directly to our folder. To demonstrate this, we're going to go into Programs, My Computer, C Drive, PCAD Training Video Folder, PCAD Excel Reports, and right here you can see based on job name it's created at PCAD Training Videos, and underneath that happens to be the Excel report we just ran. So this is a great way to make sure that all of your reports will follow one file path. The extension field allows us to choose whatever the extension should be for a specific file path. For example, Excel spreadsheets are currently saved during this tutorial to the XLS format. That is the way they are read when you look inside the folders. You can see here under the sample and Excel files XLS. However, in the future if this changes, for example, it becomes XLSA, we could come in here and just put in whatever the extension should be and then Practicad will save this under the proper name, proper folders, and most importantly the proper extension to make sure it meets the requirements of your Excel at that time. The Show Excel Workbook option allows us to view the Excel report before we save it. If this option is checked, the second we run the report, Practicab will open up the Excel workbook and there we can review it. If it is unchecked, it'll simply take the report and save it directly to the destination path. To demonstrate this, we're going to check Show Excel Workbook. We're going to hit the Save key and then we're going to exit out of Library. We're going to highlight all the entities on the drawing. We're going to run this report, and once we click on it, Practical will instantly generate the report, and then you can see here on the bottom of the screen, it's opened up the Excel workbook. So here we can review it, make modifications before we save it into our destination folder. That will conclude the Excel workbook, and it will conclude the tutorial on how to create reports.